So several weeks ago, we start this series called I Believe. And Pastor Chris did an amazing job the first week talking about I believe in God. Can we just say that? I believe in God. And, and one of the things that he said during that message, which touched me, he says, what you believe or who you believe in determines how you live. And so if you believe in God, as you say you believe in God, then your heart would want to follow God and follow God's will and purpose for your life. One of the things that I would encourage you, and I encourage people all the time, you were created for a purpose. Do you believe that? You were created by God with a divine design to do something before you leave this earth. So we believe in God. We, we come in alignment with his will and purpose in our lives. That's why we believe in him. Then Andrew, Pastor Andrew did a great job. Last week he talked about the Bible and, and why we believe in the scriptures. This love letter God gives to us for, for teaching and sometimes correcting and, and training in righteousness. And today we're going to be talking about I believe in the gospel in which the Bible talks about as good news. We believe in the gospel because it's always good news. It's never not been good news. The moment that the gospel was preached has always been good news. It hasn't changed. It has stood the test of time. Can I get an amen, church, this morning if you agree with me? The Bible talks about this good news of God because in our world today, we get all kinds of news. Sometimes we get good news, and, and I love good news, and, and good news is like you know, somebody has a baby, and, and, and there's this newborn. Anybody had a baby this year? Anyone? Anyone? I got to wait till the 11 o'clock service to ask because we're not getting much. <laughs> Maybe you're pregnant or something like that. But we celebrate the fact that a life is brought into this world. We celebrate the fact that somebody's actually graduated. Maybe they graduated from high school or elementary school or middle school or someone is a college graduate and we celebrate. Or maybe you, someone's got their master's degree, whatever that may be, we celebrate that. We celebrate weddings. Anybody get married this year? Let me test that one. Hey, Amen. Anybody engaged? I'll wait for the 11 for that one too. We're not going to worry about that. But we celebrate weddings. There's good news all around us. Somebody gets a new job. It's good news. Amen. New job. Praise God. But unfortunately, in our world, we also have bad news. That's hard to take. When you look at the, the remnants of the Maui fires, you... You think to yourself, wow, wildfires, people losing lives, a community that has to rebuild itself. Think about Hurricane Ian last year on the West Coast. And we're like, Lord, no more Ians, no more Andrews, no more. Every time I look at the weather report, I'm like, I rebuke every storm in the name of Jesus. I'm like... Go somewhere else. California. California, yes. <laughs> Gotta pray for them. Thank God it's not a category four anymore. It's a one. But still, California doesn't even know what it means to even put up a shutter. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I'm like, Lord, when are we gonna ever be rid of COVID? Like, numbers still go up. Variants and things mutating and and, and we think about this good news, bad news versus the, the gospel and the good news. And I, and I thought about news in general because news is always amongst us. It's just the medium changes. Anybody remember what this is? <laughs> Saturday night, they didn't even know what this was. It's a newspaper. You guys remember a newspaper? <laughs> like some of you remember like when you used to go and pick up the Sunday paper now we have our news feeds on our social media and our internet. We, we have all of these different mediums for news, but, but news is always going to be amongst us. There is even something called fake news nowadays, so you cannot believe everything that you read. 
I say all that to, to say this, the gospel is always good news. The, the, the word gospel in the Greek is you and Gileon. And, and it was a secular term back in the day. It just meant, is there any good news today? Is there any good news? It's, it's what you would do in your social circles. You would sit around and talk about something good. And even a question today, is there any good news today? Yeah, we can celebrate these things, but in, in actuality, these things are temporal in light of eternity. That's why the gospel is the best news. Why? It's connected to something that's eternal. Can I get an amen, somebody? It's the best news because it stood the test of time, and it's connected to something that's eternal. It's the gospel. Why is it always good news? And I'm going to take you through three movements today. It is always good news because it's always saving. The gospel still saves souls today. It's always sufficient. It's enough for you. And it's always worth sharing. And even at Calvary Chapel, one of our core values, we would say to you that we are passionate about the gospel it's what we stand on. The last time I checked, this Bible and the gospel hasn't changed. Can I encourage you today? This is still relevant for your situations today. People may look at this as an outdated book for a God that they cannot see, but I can tell you that the gospel does not fail you if you believe in it. It is still good news. You can praise God for that, that this is still good news today. So why do we believe in the gospel? First point is this. I believe the gospel because it is always saving. I believe the gospel is always saving. Say that with me one more time. I believe the gospel is always saving. When was the gospel first preached? It wasn't when Jesus came on the scene. The gospel was preached Way back in Genesis 3, when the, man, when, when the fall of humanity happened, in Genesis 3, as Adam and Eve disobey God, in Genesis 3 and 15 in the garden, this is what God says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is called a proto-evangelium, a mouthful. But the moment that man failed, God's prophetic promise of sending Jesus goes into effect. Way back in Genesis, God had already a plan of redemption. Knowing that we would actually mess up, God sends this promise. And he says, yes, the serpent will bruise his heel, but, but, but our Savior will crush his head. And so can I just tell you today, if you believe the gospel, if you believe in that good news, you already have victory over your enemy even today. Because you're, the enemy's head is crushed under Jesus. And so this prophetic promise of God going through history to save mankind. He was on this rescue mission to save us. And the good news of the gospel weaves through history. I want you to look at this timeline that Pastor Andrew had up last week. And all throughout that, the gospel has been a part of it. From Eden, the gospel has been weaving through history. All through the Old Testament, the gospel has been a part of it. So Eden, God's prophetic word comes and said, there's going to be a savior. In the election of Abraham, God's prophetic promise, the good news of the gospel is being preached through the faithfulness of Abraham. Even in the book of Exodus, we see God faithfully saying to his people, I hear your cry, and I have a plan for your redemption. That's also was preaching the gospel, even through the empires and the exiles. And here's the cool thing. Like, by the time you get to the exile, what is God saying through the prophets? 
Hey, guys, let's get it together. You know me. You're my chosen people. And the people still disobey God. That's so much like us. We know God, but we still go the other way sometimes. And maybe if you were God or I was God, we'd be like, man, listen, no, they're not getting it. But God still faithfully walks. Even in exile, he says, 70 years you're going to be in captivity. But in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Not to harm you or to hurt you, but to give you a future and a hope. So God allows them to return. This is all part of the gospel. And then we get to Easter, and then, and then there's this, this virgin that gives birth to a baby. His name is Jesus. And that's why we celebrate Easter. We celebrate his, his death, and we know what his death means, but we also celebrate that he rose again. And then he says the gospel is for everyone. Everyone. And then the end will come. So the gospel is woven through every part of history, every part of the Old and New Testament, even up until now. And here's the thought. The gospel is an expression of what God did for man, not what man could do for God. Like you could not be perfect for the gospel. God gave the gospel to us through his son, through this good news. And this is what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He says, be reminded. Now, brothers and sisters, verse 1. I remind you of the gospel which I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to it. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through four, it says, what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised, raised on the third day according to the scriptures. I break down the gospel as simple as this. He came, he died, and he rose again. Can I get a hallelujah, somebody? Right. He came when you are worthy to be saved, but he came anyway. He died for our sins, a punishment that each one of us deserved, and he rose again for our justification. If you believe in that, he says, you are saved. And even now, the gospel is saving. I believe in this room, the gospel is for everyone. How do I know? How do I know this? I was connecting with one of our staff gentlemen. His name is John. And last week, he goes to a prison, and this man on death row, and he's going to share the gospel. Not rightfully so. These men have done some terrible things. But he and I were talking, you know, like society, these men would be outcasts. Society would say they deserve to be on death row. But what Jesus says is, if, if they believe in me, they will be redeemed. And, and so what John was telling me was like, you know who was leading worship? The prisoners were leading us into the presence of God. So we as volunteers are going to share the gospel, but the prisoners are actually the ones leading us in worship. Can I tell you, those prisoners that believe in Jesus, they are going to heaven when they're done, when it's all said and done here. And I say this to, to you this morning, there's, there's no one too far from God right now. You could be an atheist right now. You can think that you're damaged goods right now. You can think that you're too messed up for God to clean up. Can I just say the gospel is for you today if you believe in it. You can't automatically assume just because somebody shows up in church, they know Jesus. They may know about Jesus, but without a relationship with Jesus. And so if you want a relationship with Jesus, just believe in the gospel. It's the good news. Isaiah 59 and 1 says this, the Lord's arm is not too short that it cannot save, nor his ears too dull that it cannot hear. He hears your heart right now. And the gospel is the only thing that can save you. 
Here's what I know. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we may feel not that we got to be better for the gospel. You might think that what you're doing right now is actually working better than the gospel. You might think culture has the answers to saving you. You might think, well, if, if my thing that I'm doing just works out, everything will be okay. Can I tell you, can I save you some time today? Can I save you a whole lot of uh, just your personal time? There's nothing out there that can save you but the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no other answer out there. But the God who created you, the gospel is always saving Let's go to our next point, Romans 1 and 16, Romans chapter 1. We're going to go there. This is what Paul says in verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Stop right there. The next point is this. I believe the gospel is always sufficient. It's always enough. I love it. Paul in Romans 1, in 16, he says, I'm not ashamed of the thing that saved me. Now, now here in that Roman culture, you got to know the context. People would make fun of Christians because they believed in a Savior that died. No one believed in a Savior or a hero that died. Heroes didn't die in Greek culture or Roman culture. And so for you to believe in a Savior that actually died on the cross meant you were weak. But Paul says, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the one who died for me because without him I would have no hope. I'm not ashamed. Why? Because it's the power of God to save me because it was the power of God that saved you and I, right? Something had to break through you doing what you wanted to do. Something had to break through you as you were pursuing your own purpose and not pursuing God's divine purpose for you. Something broke through. It's the power of God that saves us. But he says also in verse 17, for in the gospel, it's the righteousness of God that is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. It's not only the power of God that saves you, but it's the power of God that sustains you also. It's living by faith. Because you know how it is. When you first get saved, it doesn't mean your reality has changed. Amen. You still got to go back and live life. So how do you live it? Do you live it going back to the things you used to do? Or do you now apply the things that you learn? And so we live by faith. The gospel is sufficient for every situation in life if you believe. 2 Peter 1 and 3 says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. I will declare to you with all the confidence that I can muster up, there is not one situation in your life right now that the gospel is not sufficient for. Amen. Not one. Here's the thing. Do you believe that, though? Okay, y'all don't sound like y'all believe it. I mean, do you believe? Yeah. It is, right? But, but here's the thing. If, if we're being honest, sometimes we, we only believe God is all we need when God is all we have. Sometimes God's got to strip things. He's got to take the relationship away. He's got to take certain things for you to see that God and the gospel is sufficient for you. In every situation, this is the good news of the gospel. And I was praying and thinking about this as an example. And, and I love this song. How many love that song, that God is a way maker? Anybody know that song? A promise keeper. 
The gospel is good news because the gospel tells me that God is still a way maker. He makes a way out of no way. And so right now, if you're having issues in your marriage or a relationship, you're having issues in, with your singleness or you're having issues with your, with your family or your finances, the last time I checked this word, God is Jehovah Jireh. His name has not changed. He's a way maker. He's a provider. And so that song is true. The gospel also tells me that God is a miracle worker. That is our God. He's a healer. A few weeks ago, my, our campus, we, we just opened up the altar, and, and a woman came up, and she said, three weeks ago, the doctors told me that I had this brain tumor that was incurable. It was cancerous. And she said, I prayed for three weeks. And I'm here to tell you that the last time I went to my doctor's appointment, the doctor said the brain tumor is gone. So I believe God is a miracle worker, but here's what I know as well. You may not necessarily experience that healing on this side of heaven, but can I just tell you our true healing is not here. Our true healing is, is where there's no more sin, where there's no more darkness, where there's no more sorrow. Our true healing is in heaven, so God is still sovereign over your situation today. He's a miracle worker. The gospel tells us that he's a promise keeper. <laughs> and his purpose is for you in your life right now. God will deliver. The last time I checked, God will fulfill every promise that he makes. Every promise. Ask the children of Israel if God promised to give them a land. Ask, ask Jairus' daughter or the woman with the issue of blood that God is not a healer. He's a promise keeper. He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. I, I add this. The gospel tells us that God is a chain breaker also. Anybody has ever felt God break some chains off of their lives, that God has freed them. So if you're dealing with a mental health issue, depression, anxiety, suicide, God can free you. You may be on a journey to freedom. You may not feel it today. You may not feel it tomorrow. But God frees people through the gospel. The gospel tells us that he is light in the darkness. God removes our blindness so that we can see him fully. I was thinking about blind Bartimaeus who just cried out to God. He's got, what do you want? He said, I want to see. Some of you just want to see God for who he is fully. Sometimes we think that it's something that we need to do for God, but it's what God has already done for us. We don't have to be perfect for God. And even now, I, I think about life. Sometimes it's, it's sad that, that, that sometimes we have to come to the end of ourselves before we actually see God for who he is. Even today, we're dealing in Christendom where people are deconstructing their faith. And you're hearing people that used to believe in Jesus coming out and saying, I don't, I don't know if I could do this anymore. But God, you're not coming through. So, so, why do I, so why do I still hold on to this if, if, if it's not enough for me anymore? Are you there yet? Where Jesus is like, hold on to me. I know your situation, if you're just holding on, you got, you're like, God, mm, if, if God, if it does not change, I don't know how long I could keep going. Can I remind you that the gospel is still good? Even when you don't feel it's good, even when you don't feel it's answering all your questions. And here's what I know, even if you don't believe in this anymore, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 12, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Even in your weakness, God is strong. 
So, so even if you don't believe with all your heart right now, God's grace says, I still love you in your disbelief. I still love you even when you may not love me. I'm still faithful even though you might feel faithless right now. Can we just thank God right there? Because we don't have to be perfect in our belief. We don't have to have life all together. So many people are trying to get right for God. God is like, no, you come with me and then I'll make you right. <laughs> you don't got to be perfect for Jesus. That's why he came. That's the good news of the gospel. You don't have to be perfect because the Savior was already perfect with, for, for you. His grace is sufficient even when you come to the end of yourself. And if you're there, we're praying for you. Because we realize life is hard. Some of you are going through some real trials right now. And you come into church and people say, how are you doing? You're like, praise Jesus, but it hurts. <laughs> I praise him, I love him, but right now I don't understand him. Maybe even during worship, you want to lift your hands, but you can't. It's too much. It's overwhelming. And your heart feels weak. There's a scripture that's so powerful. It's in Psalm 61. David says, because you look at David and men and women in the Bible, they got weak just like us. And David says in the Psalm, he says, he says when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Some of us just need to be led to a rock that is higher than our situations. Can I get an amen, somebody? somebody? God, take me above the fray to where I could see you. He's sufficient. Let's go on to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 for our last point. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. Paul says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God has, was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If you are taking note, the last point of the message is this. I believe the gospel is always worth sharing. By way of illustration, you know, when you search for a restaurant, most of us will use something like Google. Anybody with me, right? Last night it was the same thing. It's like... Anyway, I was just like, you might use Google to look at your five-star rating. What's a good restaurant? What's good for Thai? What's good for sushi? How many remember, just as an aside, that you used to search the yellow pages? Anybody remember the yellow pages? <laughs> right? Before Google, you had the white pages. You had to go through alphabetical order to find somebody to give them a call. Now we have Google, but here's the point. As soon as you eat something good or you go to a spa, if you're a young lady or, or an older lady, it doesn't really matter. And so you tell your friend that you have to go eat at this place, don't you? Girl, you got to go try that spa. Bro, the sushi is to die for. Here's a question. When was the last time you shared the gospel with someone with that much passion? Ooh, that's challenging. Whew. Bro, you got to go try. Go try that sushi, but we're not. Bro, you got to go try Jesus. It's the best news the gospel. And here's some stats by LifeWay. According to a LifeWay study, 95% of all Christians have never won a soul to Christ. 80% of all Christians do not consi consistently witness for Christ. 
Only three in 10 unchurched Americans say a Christian has ever shared with them one-on-one -on -one how a person becomes a Christian. Only slightly more say a Christian has told them about the benefits of participating in a local church or the, the benefits of becoming a Christian. This is especially sad because many unchurched people say that they're open to having religious conversations. Close to half of unchurched Americans say they would discuss freely if someone wanted to talk about their religious beliefs. Another 31% said they would listen without actively participating in the gospel, without participating at a church. So the world is open to the gospel. And so it's just up to us to share it beyond the service. And I would just say this as a last point, so to speak, th these words, I want, you, I want you to hear this. The gospel is too good not to share. It's too good not to share. And here's what can happen to some of us. Some of us are afraid of, of fear and rejection. What if they don't listen to me? What if I don't have the right Bible verse? What if I don't say the right thing? Some of us are afraid of sharing. Some of us feel like they're, they're going to be rejected. Can I remind you, as you look through the Gospels, not everybody received Jesus either. So it doesn't matter. And then you have some zealous people that are like, turn or burn, like this is your last day. <laughs> if you don't get it right, it's not going to be nice where you're going. I'm just letting you know. And I'm just like, that's not going to win people either. <laughs> so how do you do this in a way that is winsome? How do you do this? You pray for opportunities and you share it with the love of Jesus. The same love that he had for you. Because when you think about it, anytime you might have some, some trepidation about sharing the gospel, you would say to yourself, someone cared enough to share the same message with me. Someone loved me enough to share this good news with me. And I would tell you, nine times out of ten, how it even happens for me, I may ask someone, do you mind if I pray for you? And most people will not turn on prayer. Especially if they're in a situation where they have no answers. Most of the time, they will not tur turn on prayer. So then's the next question. And can I just say, it's not like scripted. It's just me sensing God and the Holy Spirit opening me up to that situation. Then I might ask, well, do you have a faith in God? Then I know exactly where they're at. Just sharing what God has done for you. Paul says it. We get to be these ambassadors for Christ, reconciling the world back to God. And, 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 and essentially, yes, essentially what it is, is, is as we're ambassadors, we're one being sent by a messenger with good news for the world. So when I'm reconciling people back to God, that is me like taking somebody from my, my, my job. And so if you look at your job, share the gospel at your job. Just be winsome and loving. You might have a coworker. You might have somebody in your school. You might own a business. You might be retired. You might be a stay-at-home home mom it doesn't matter wherever you are you share the gospel and reconciling is like you're carrying that heart to Jesus and you're allowing Jesus to do the rest can I remind you you and I can't save anybody that's the Holy Spirit's job that is God's job to save people not our job and so we just bring them to Jesus Here's, here's what Romans 10 and 15 says. How beautiful are the feet that bring good news wherever you are. And most recently, I had a good friend of mine who was in a medical crisis, and he calls me up. One or two days before he's going to be discharged, his name is Joe. He calls me up. Pastor Dwayne, guess what? My nurse was asking, what church do I go to? 
And she had a million questions. And, and did I do good? Did I do good? I go, Joe, you did absolutely amazing. And so here's the thing. Two weeks ago, Joe was in the hospital. Two days before he gets discharged, it just so happened right before he leaves that a nurse is actually inquiring about a church and they have never met before in their lives. And so the day that I go and pick him up, I, I get to connect with this nurse and she goes, I'm coming to your church on Sunday. Can I just say, Joe and I didn't do nothing but, but offer Jesus and the good news of, of redemption. That is it. God set the whole thing up. Now, side note, we're still waiting for her to come to church, but that's not our problem. <laughs> we trust God with the results. <laughs> but, but I want to tell you this. When you share the gospel with people, it's not just about them coming to church. It's about them being in a relationship with Jesus. So we believe the gospel is the best news. It's always good news. Why? Because it's always saving. Can I get an amen? amen? It's always sufficient. And it's always worth sharing. And as we continue in this I Believe series, we want you to continue on. We, we talked about believing in God. Believing in the Bible. Today we talked about believing in the gospel. Next week we'll talk about I believe in the church. And what does it mean to be a part of the body of Christ? And then, and then the next Sunday, our fearless leader, Pastor Doug Souter, comes back and he ends the series on the mission of the church. And so we're excited for what God is doing right now. Can I get one more amen? Hallelujah. Just to close it down. Let's bow our heads and pray. God, thank you so much. For the gospel, this good news that saves lives, that is enough, that is worth sharing. And even now, God, we believe that the gospel is moving and reconciling up to this very moment. We believe in the power of God to save and reconcile. So, God, we are asking right now for your Holy Spirit to move, to do your good work. That you would add to your kingdom this morning. So we trust you, Holy Spirit. And we ask for you to touch hearts today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.